Welcome to the new video seminary. Here is Dr. Hoffman. Subscribe and give me likes. Let's start now. In last lesson, we pointed out that there are two reasons why countries specialize in trade. First, countries differ either in their resources or in their technology and specialize in the things they do relatively well. Second, economies of scale or increasing returns make it advantageous for each country to specialize in the production of only a limited range of goods and services. The past seminaries considered models in which all trade is based on comparative advantage, that is, differences between countries are the only reason for trade. This lesson introduces the role of economies of scale. The analysis of trade based on economies of scale presents certain problems that we have avoided so far. Up to now, we have assumed that markets are perfectly competitive, so that all monopoly profits are always competed away. When there are increasing returns, however, large firms may have an advantage over small ones, so that markets tend to be dominated by one firm monopoly or, more often, by a few firms oligopoly. If this happens, our analysis of trade has to take into account the effects of imperfect competition. However, economies of scale need not lead to imperfect competition if they take the form of external economies, which apply at the level of the industry rather than at the level of the individual firm. In this lesson, we will focus on the role of such external economies of scale in trade, reserving the discussion of internal economies for the next lesson. After studying and watching this video seminary, you will be able to recognize why intentional trade often occurs from increasing returns to scale, understand the differences between internal and external economies of scale, discuss the sources of external economies, and discuss the roles of external economies and knowledge spillovers in shaping comparative advantage and international trade patterns. The models of comparative advantage already presented were based on the assumption of constant returns to scale. That is, we assumed that if inputs to an industry were doubled, industry output would double as well. In practice, however, many industries are characterized by economies of scale, also referred to as increasing returns, so that production is more efficient, the larger the scale at which it takes place. Where there are economies of scale, doubling the inputs to an industry will more than double the industry's production. External economies of scale occur when the cost per unit depends on the size of the industry, but not necessarily on the size of any one firm. Internal economies of scale occur when the cost per unit depends on the size of an individual firm, but not necessarily on that of the industry. Marshall argued that there are three main reasons why a cluster of firms may be more efficient than an individual firm in isolation. The ability of a cluster to support specialized suppliers, the way that a geographically concentrated industry allows labor market pooling, and the way that a geographically concentrated industry helps foster knowledge spillovers. The same factors continue to be valid today. 
In many industries, the production of goods and services, and to an even greater extent, the development of new products, requires the use of specialized equipment or support services. Yet an individual company doesn't provide a large enough market for these services to keep the suppliers in business. A localized industrial cluster can solve this problem by bringing together many firms that collectively provide a large enough market to support a wide range of specialized suppliers. This phenomenon has been extensively documented in Silicon Valley. 1994 study recounts how, as the local industry grew, engineers left established semiconductor companies to start firms that manufactured capital goods such as diffusion ovens, step and repeat cameras and testers and materials and components such as photo masks, testing jigs and specialized chemicals. This independent equipment sector promoted the continuing formation of semiconductor firms by freeing individual producers from the expense of developing capital equipment internally and by spreading the costs of development. A company that tried to enter the industry in another location, for example in a country that didn't have a comparable industrial cluster, would be at an immediate disadvantage because it would lack easy access to Silicon Valley suppliers and would either have to provide them for itself or be faced with the tasks of trying to deal with Silicon Valley based suppliers at long distance. After the first factor specialized suppliers, we can give example of labor market pooling, the second source of external economies in the way that a cluster of firms can create a pooled market for workers with highly specialized skills. Such a pool market is to the advantage of both the producers and the workers, as the producers are less likely to suffer from labor shortages and the workers are less likely to become unemployed. And the third factor or reason is knowledge spillovers. It is by now a cliche that in the modern economy knowledge is at least as important in input as are factors of production like labor capital and raw materials. This is especially true in highly innovative industries where being even a few months behind the cutting edge in production techniques or production design can put a company at a major disadvantage. But where does the specialized knowledge that is crucial to success and innovative industries come from? Companies can acquire technology through their own research and development efforts. They can also try to learn from competitors by studying their products. And in some cases, by taking them apart, a research engineer, their design and manufacture. An important source of technical know-how, however, is the informal exchange of information and ideas that takes place at a personal level. And this kind of informal diffusion of knowledge often seems to take place most effectively when an industry is concentrated in a fairly small area so that employees of different companies mix socially and talk freely about technical issues. As we've just seen, a geographically concentrated industry is able to support specialized suppliers, provide a pooled labor market and specialized knowledge spillovers in a way that the geographically dispersed industry can't. But the strength of these economies presumably depends on the industry size. Other things equal, a bigger industry will generate stronger external economies. The average cost uh, refers to the total cost of production divided by the number of units produced. It can also be obtained by summing the average variable cost and the average fixed costs. Management uses average cost to make decisions pricing its products for maximum revenue profit. So the dynamic increasing returns process is modeled by generalized polya earns. A 
Economic geography is a branch of geography that deals with the relations of physical and economic conditions to the production and distribution of commodities. Economic geography has a long pedigree. Its traditional focus has been the distribution of various productive activities with subdivisions into, for example, geography of agriculture, industrial geography and the geography of services and patterns of trade such as transport geography. The main objective of economic geography is as expounded to examine man's economic achievement in terms of production and consumption in the light of his environment, to assess the relative importance of the study of this branch of geography, we have to evaluate the purposes that it serves. Examples, how does the geography affect the economy? For example, location and climate have large effects on income levels and income growth through their effects on transport cost, disease burdens and agricultural productivity, among other channels. Geography also seems to affect economic policy choices. So in the presence of external economies of scale, however, there is a forward falling supply curve. The larger the industry's output, the lower the price at which firms are willing to sell, because the average cost of production falls as industry output rises. Dynamic scale economies like external economies at a point in time potentially justify protectionism. Suppose that a country could have long enough cost to produce a good for export if it had more production experience, but that given the current lack of experience, the good can be produced competitively. Such a country might increase its long-term welfare either by encouraging the production of the good by a subsidy or by protecting it from foreign competition until the industry can stand on its own feet. The argument for temporary protection is of industries to enable them to gain experience is known as the infant industry argument. This argument has played an important role in debates over the role of trade policy in economic development. To sum up, firstly, trade need not be the result of comparative advantage. Instead, it can result from increasing returns or economies of scale. That is from a tendency of unit costs to be lower with larger output. Economies of scale give countries an incentive to specialize and trade even in the absence of differences in resources or technology between countries. Economies of scale can be internal, depending on the size of the firm, or external, depending on the size of the industry. Secondly, economies of scale can lead to a breakdown of perfect competition unless they take the form of external economies, which occur at the level of the industry instead of the firm. And thirdly, external economies give an important role to history and accident in determining the pattern of international trade. When external economies are important, a country starting with a large advantage may retain the advantage even if another country could potentially produce the same goods more cheaply. When external economies are important, countries can considerably lose from trade. At the end, there is just to say subscribe and give me likes. See you soon.